Hello everyone, Seb here and it's time that we play through another game. Now I've decided that I don't have as much time for full out reviews anymore. So I figured, you know, as I do a let's play of a game, I might as well do a small review just before starting the let's play. So to give something to those who just do not like let's plays. Because, you know, I understand that not everyone likes a full playthrough, but just likes an idea of a game. So I will do small reviews before every let's play. And the game we're gonna play for next, and which we're gonna look at now, is Little Samson for the NES. Released by Taito in 1992, making it a fairly late game in the NES library. And as such, it is fairly sought after and quite expensive, especially the NTSC version. But that does have a reason, because to many people this is a real hidden gem and one that very many people missed out on. But is this actually the case? Well, let's check out some gameplay and find out for ourselves. The story of the game is a standard affair. Evil Dark Prince escapes captivity, is all pissed off and decides to, what else, take over the world. Enter our four heroes who need to put a stop to his dastardly plans through teamwork of course. What is unique is the way the story is told. A lot is really left up to your own interpretation as there is no written dialogue to be found in the entire game. Now of course you could read the manual if you're lucky enough to get it with your copy but come on. Game is reading manuals? <laughs> what kind of absurd notion is that? The gameplay itself reminds me a bit of a mix between a Mega Man game and Super Mario Bros. 2. It's a platformer in which you can change between the four characters at almost any given point. Each has their own unique abilities and way of attacking. Samson is probably the most versatile of the four, having a great jump, the ability to duck and he can scale walls and ceilings as well. He also has a decently big life meter. His attack shoots bells in a straight line and these aren't all too powerful unfortunately. Being the only character who cannot permanently die during a level, he is made to be able to traverse almost all stages on his own, even though the others might be better suited for specific sections. Being Taito, they just had to put in a green dragon somewhere and Kikira makes for a great second character to fit that bill. She is decently fast, can temporarily fly and has a firm grip on any surface, even ice. She can also charge her slightly upward arcing attack for a devastating fire breath, which is great on bigger enemies like bosses. She can't take much of a beating though. Gam the Golem on the other hand is the tank of the party having the most health out of all. Even spikes are no trouble for this guy. He's slow and his jumping abilities won't get him into any basketball team anytime soon. He's also big and lacks the ability to duck, making him an easy target for enemies. His attack is also lacking in reach, but up close his punches do dish out a lot of pain. Finally we come to KO the mouse who is the most nimble of the characters. The bombs he lays can also do the most damage, but they are by far the hardest to score a hit with. This isn't helped by the fact that he dies as soon as an enemy looks at him funny. If you want to go for a speedrun though, he's your mouse, as he is by far the fastest character of the four and he can scale walls like Samson, run across water and squeeze through the narrow passages. The controls for all four of our heroes is really tight and you will always feel in control of your own fate. Some areas may seem a bit tricky at first, but soon you'll learn that almost every area is easy to traverse with the right character. Remembering to occasionally switch between the four heroes is key to an easy victory. This tactic can also keep you alive, as each character has their own life bar. Lives are shared however, so if one hero bites the bullet, all lose a life and you'll have to restart the level or boss fight. The character who died will not be available though, until you either clear the level or revive them with a previously collected potion. Samson will never be left out of the fight though, so if someone has to die, make sure it's him so you won't lose any of the others. This is especially important for the boss fights, where either Kikira or Gam can often be huge assets to dispatching these challenging opponents. The bosses really are the highlight of this game, both in design and the gameplay. Don't expect to beat these guys on your first try, as they can be really tough. Due to the controls being so tight and the fun nature of the fights themselves, you'll never feel cheated though, and it's just fun to retry again with a new strategy or character. Apart from the bosses, the game can be fairly easy, mainly because you have the ability to switch out hurt characters. There are also items enemies randomly drop that can help you out, like refill your life or extend the life bar. 
Each hero can also collect a potion that can be used to refill life or revive that hero once they've been defeated. The game lets you choose between two difficulty settings, easy and normal. This is one of those games that cheats you out of some extra levels and the true ending when playing on easy. I don't much care for such tactics in games personally. The final castle to go through on normal is also considerably harder compared to the stage before it, as the heroes do not regenerate their health in between those final stages. What's lost is lost there, and combining that with the hardest levels of the game and a mini boss rush makes for quite a challenge. Other differences between the difficulty settings include the amount of enemies you encounter during the levels and the max health you can obtain for each character. On normal mode you will have reached your max health by the 4th level or so, and seeing how many pickups you'll find to extend it, up to the last area even, this really seems out of balance a bit. This is just a minor complaint though. Something that I found to be more disappointed by is the music. Now the tracks themselves are fine, it's just that there are only a few. Apart from the final stages and boss fights, you only have 4 other tracks. The track that plays depends on the hero who is currently out. What's also very annoying is that these tracks start over every time you close the pause menu, even if you do not select another character. But those are really my only gripes with the game. It looks great, not only the bosses, but the entire game has neat graphics, especially the backgrounds look pretty kick ass for an NES game. The game offers a nice challenge, but remains fair and fun. If anything, it will feel too short once you get the hang of it. And that's when the replayability kicks in, as there are a few alternating paths and optional stages to explore. Plus you can always set out fun challenges for yourself, like completing the game by sticking to one specific hero whenever possible. In the end, I can see why this game is getting such high prices, and I'd say it's only worth a decent amount of money. So if you don't have the chance, see if you can pick it up. Now keep in mind that the Paul version, like this one, it's considerably cheaper and easier to come by than the NTSC version, so if you have the means to play Paul games, do pick this copy up, it's a lot cheaper. Well guys, that's it for this review. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of Little Samson, I'd love to hear about your experiences and opinions. And I do hope you enjoyed this video as well, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and look forward to a full playthrough of this game soon, in which I of course will also showcase all of the secrets in the game. Well guys, until then, take care and see you later.